This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. Thursday morning, chugging along to the end of the week. We are coming to you, as always, from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. I am Prashant. With me, my colleagues Sonia and Nigel. Guys, hi, morning. Hi, good morning, morning. Prashant. Morning, Nigel. And of course, you know, at a time when, you, as they say, when it rains, it pours. So it's pouring good news. Today, you not only have good global queues, but you also have Brent that has fallen quite a bit. So I think all in all, it's a good recipe for the market today. Well, that's right. You know, in terms of markets, things are looking good. But, you know, I was coming to work this morning. It appeared schools have restarted. So think more people on the road as well. So the kids are <laughs> back on par with us now. <laughs> you know, quite a which few also, schools. Which are also means one has to leave a little earlier. I mean, you've got to account for that uh, traffic. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's <laughs> the true. Morning. <laughs> All right, well, uh, you know, the market is also starting to find a little bit of traffic, right, on the way up. Uh, and I think, uh, naturally so, it's done quite well. And uh, uh, now we are basically talking about nothing but all-time highs, at least on the Nifty. But other parts of the market are not firing. So let's just quickly take it from exactly there, what you need to know as we begin another session. U.S. markets last night ended higher. You have the Nasdaq, which was up about 0.46 percent, half a percent, by the way. S&P was up as well. Uh, Dow, Russell, 2000. I mean, in indices were all higher. You had data. The Michigan one-year inflation expectations actually rose to about 4.5 percent. Why is this important? This is, again, I mean, ties into the inflation story. The consensus now has moved to the fact that inflation is yesterday's story. Rate cuts are tomorrow's story. And when I say tomorrow, I mean 2024. Markets are pricing some quantum of rate cuts in. Now, when you get data like this, which is the inflation expectation survey, right, showing that, uh, you know, the survey shows inflation to rise, I mean, that's a bit jarring. But, I mean, it's just one data point. It's jarring. It's a kind of, uh, it, it falls outside of the syllabus, so as to speak, but we'll see. Uh, you need more data points to build anything substantial or read something substantial of it. The 10-year was flat. I mean, you know, yesterday the morning you were saying that the 10-year ended down two basis points. This morning, uh, you know, we had to say it's up two basis points. Nothing, absolutely flat, 4.4%. By the way, the 100-day for the 10-year yield is at about 4.33. So we're pretty close now to important long-term supports as well. Uh, the dollar index moved up a little bit. We're just under the 104-odd uh, level, uh, which is, again, nothing substantial, so as to speak. Oil prices, I mean, last night before we went to sleep, they were down about 4, 45 odd percent but this morning as we came back uh, and we start today's session, oil prices actually are down just about 1% or so. I mean, there was actually a large recovery, intraday recovery, which we had, and we ended about 1% down. We ended just under $82 per barrel mark. So a plunge, but by close, it to kind of uh, recoup some of those losses. The news is pretty uh, straightforward. There was an OPEC meeting on Sunday. It was supposed to be decisive, more cuts, more players coming on board to kind of balance the oil market. That's not happened. Disagreement between a big uh, sort of uh, countries which supply oil. Uh, and the fear, actually, the in a way, fear for oil uh, producers, but good news for consumers like us, is that if the largest producer, which is Saudi Arabia, is unable to convince other players uh, of uh, the need, to mo need for more cuts, you actually may see some reversals of existing cuts as well, which means more oil in the market, which means lower prices. But again, we'll see. Uh, just one thing, U.S. stock and bond markets are closed today. So no trading in Thursday for the Thanksgiving holiday. So just keep that in mind. So you won't have cues from the U.S. and world markets when we come back tomorrow morning. Just to tie all of this back to our market here, the Nifty is, uh, as I've been saying, stuck in a bit of a range. Uh, the resistance still, I would say, is the 18, 19850 to 19875 levels, same levels that I put out yesterday as well. I mean, for all the up and down, and we had a fair bit yesterday, we ended just a little higher, uh, which is good news. I mean, uh, nothing to take away, some 30 points up. Support for the Nifty comes in around that 40-hour exponential moving average, which has moved up a little bit. Now, that number is about 19,714, which is about 100 points down from where we are. The bank nifty is the real problem child here. And that broke below the low of 43,450 yesterday. And uh, looks like we perhaps are starting a fresh leg down. It could head to, to my mind, targets of about 42,800 or so, which is not very far from where we are. But that's the weakest link in this entire chain of markets. Uh, and, uh, I mean, for that to happen, nifty banks should not, on the upside, once again reclaim 43,790, which is yesterday's high. Uh, so, uh, you know, the bank nifty stays under it, looks a little weaker, and you perhaps have some more way to go, at least one and a half, two percent or so initially. 
the small cap index, which has been the strongest of all indices, and this is, we're talking about the broader market, that is also starting to roll over. It's the first signs. We've not had any pronounced continued weakness in the small and mid-cap part of the market for a while now. But yesterday, the small cap index ended at the day's low. It was just a one and a quarter percent cut. But the point is it's coming after a breathless straight up move. Uh, so I think, you know, that I would say bears close washing. Could it be that, uh, you know, as the Nifty Bank uh, sort of does not participate very strongly, the Nifty is range bound and the broader market starts to weaken, the broader market starts to uh, sort of, you know, lend weakness to other parts of the market as well, the frontline indices as well. That's something we don't want to see. And that's why I'm saying that bears closer watching uh, from here out. The GIF Nifty will come up on your screen. And I think uh, that is indicating uh, what a 10 point flattish kind of start. We're at about, what, 19,895. Sonia. So, you know, I was trying to think about the, you know, what the sort of overarching theme for this market is. And I feel like the the market, the direction is positive, mm. but the momentum is lacking a bit, right? Mm. After the kind of up move that we've seen, there's a little bit of a cooling off of the momentum. But having said all of that, this is definitely a positive market. So, you know, just map it on the last many days and the Nifty is up almost 1,000 points from the lows that we saw in the month of October. So, it's definitely a buy on dips market and the trend is on the upside, but there's no great momentum, there's no great trigger at this point in time. In the last six months, it's an 8% rally that we've seen on the index already. The Dow is up almost 200 points overnight as well. The US 10-year yield has cooled off. The yield is now at about 4.36%. So, this is the lowest that we've seen since September of 2022. And of course, we've been talking about how Brent crude prices have also cooled off. In fact, for the US equity markets, if you look at it, the month of November has been great so far. The Nasdaq is up 11%. The Dow is up about 7%. So, the going has been very good. For our own markets too, domestic institutions continue to be pumping in money thick and fast. So you have about 720 crores that was bought in the cash markets yesterday. A couple of things to watch out for. There's so much traction in the primary markets, especially for what's happening with uh, Tata Tech. So yesterday you saw that phenomenal move on Tata Tech. It was subscribed six and a half times on day one itself. And within hours of you know opening, Tata Tech uh, IPO was oversubscribed. Uh, the consumption stocks continue to be in focus. So, Honasa's numbers were very good. Uh, the profits almost doubled. There was a 21% revenue growth. So, that stock will definitely be in focus today. And yesterday's big headline, of course, was Titan, the last 48 hours, where Titan has hit that market cap of 3 lakh crores. And, uh, you know, it perhaps continues to see traction. It was up 1% yesterday as well. So, all in all, a good move on the market, but we just need some more triggers, I guess, uh, for the market to build on to its game. Well, it appears they're ready and the knockout punch is what <laughs> is required, right? But yesterday, I think what was good, uh, Sonia, is that we ended above that 19,800 mark. The previous uh, four sessions, we went there thrice and we couldn't conquer that 19,800. So yesterday, I think that was one positive that I looked at. Now, today, the big question is, can the bulls go ahead and drive home their advantage? You know, things are looking up. Brent crude prices, yes, they recovered from the lows, but they're still weakish overnight. The 10-year yield as well as the dollar index, both of them are well-behaved. And also, you know, we're not going to get any shocker coming out of the U.S. markets. Today they're shut, tomorrow they're open, only for half a day out. So it's unlikely that we get a shocker coming out from U.S. markets. So we're on our own terms. The Nifty will, you know, the bulls will want to take the Nifty higher and in fact conquer those decisive levels, which we'll get to in just a bit. What did the FIs do yesterday? Well, they added more than 3,500 uh, long positions yesterday. And that's why, in fact, you know, now the, uh, the uh, now you're seeing that there has been a fair bit of short covering that's taken place. So just pull out uh, a chart, you know, which should come up for you. 175,000 contracts were on the short side. That's come down to around 125,000 contracts. So we have already seen a fair bit of short covering on uh, the index futures itself. And now the net shots are at the lowest levels we have seen in the last, uh, you know, one month or so. That's the lowest level we have seen in this series. That's the November series. And that's one reason why the Nifty has gained close to around 1,000 points. So let's get to the levels. Recent high, 19,875. Well, that's the level that the bulls will have to conquer, you know, because the bears appear they are protecting that level. We went yesterday closer to around the 19,700 mark, and from there we did see a good bounce of around 100 points. So near term, today we have expiry as well that's playing out. So that becomes the near term support out there. The Nifty Bank, now you pull up, uh, you know, a line graph, and the 20 and the 200 DMA, well, they're very, very close out there. So yesterday it ended closer around the 20 DMA. You don't want it to break that level decisively. So this 43,200 to around 40, uh, 43,500 becomes an extremely crucial support zone. And I say that because of the 20 and the 200 DMA. And also if you see that uh, move that we saw from late October till, uh, you know, middle of November, we saw closer around the 2,200 point move on the Nifty Bank. 
And then, you know, if you look at the retracement of that move, we should get those levels up for you on the screen. You know, that level comes in at around 43,260. That's the 50% 50, 50 retracement of that 2,200 point rally. So that's an important level, 43,260 on the downside. And just one more point, the mid and the small caps, yesterday we saw some bit of underperformance. I think it could have something to do with what's going on even in, uh, you know, the IPO market. Because maybe some liquidity is moving out there. And that could be one reason why we saw some kind of an underperformance coming in in the small cap index. So we'll have to wait, I think, for a broader trend to emerge, say, in the next five, six trading sessions, once these big IPOs are out of the way. But that's one point, I think, why the small cap index underperformed yesterday. Okay. Well, lots to talk about in the market in the next two and a half hours. So let's get cracking very quickly. First up, we have some money market views coming in. Parul Mittal Sinha of Standard Chartered Bank says that the dollar INR saw a slight upward pressure and crossed a key resistance of 83.30 on a slight rebound in the dollar and uptick in oil prices last week. She expects the dollar INR to trade in a range of 83.15 to 83.38 next week, with the dollar expected to consolidate in the Thanksgiving week. She said the IPO-led inflows are also likely to support Forex. Okay, on bonds, Parul says that despite a fall in global yields, domestic yields saw an upward bias post the weekly auction on factors like positioning, uptick in oil prices and fears of next CPI print, clocking 6%. She expects a 10-year benchmark bond to trade between, the yield to trade between 7.15 and 7.3% next week. Uh, says that focus remains on the OPEC meeting while trends in global rates remain uh, remains to be seen. Well, we have a lot of stock specific action to track for you. We get to that in just a bit in our special top 10 segment. For the time being, we just run you through the list. We have Honasa Consumer, TVS Motors, NMDC, Genesis, CE Info Systems, Shalbi, and Wellspun Corp. All of them on the back of positive news flow. While on the flip side, you have Interglobe Aviation, Sipla, and Vulture Nagar Industries that will be reacting to negative news flow.